Let's uh, get to some of these fintech names. Josh, these all these names all sound like the kinds of names you all don't want to own in this sort of market environment. Well, first of all, none of them are actually disruptive. Uh, some of them are exploiting legal, legal loopholes and doing things that uh, larger financial companies just would never do because they have lawyers. And then some of them are basically just subsidizing free services using venture capital money. And there's a limit uh, in terms of the length of time you can get away with doing that. At a certain point, your backers are going to want you to make money or they're going to get out. And we've seen that in the private market. I don't know if a lot of people are aware. There was a company called Wealthfront that was supposed to disrupt financial advisory, which is a little close to home for me. <laughs> they just hilariously sold themselves to UBS. So I think the fintech, the quote unquote fintech revolution has been substantially overplayed. They can buy as many stadium sponsorships as they want. In the end, if the economy gets a little bit more treacherous, credit conditions continue to tighten. It's going to be the companies like Bank of America and JP Morgan and Charles Schwab that are spending huge money on innovation of their own that are going to win out. And a lot of the so-called disruptors will end up either as zeros or lunch meat. Uh, for the M&A uh, market. And I think it's important that people understand great ideas are not the same thing as great businesses. Jim, why'd you dump PayPal on Friday? Uh, the risk reward in PayPal and frankly the whole space is just skewed in the wrong direction and it keys off of what Josh was saying. But I'll phrase it this way, like why make life hard right now? There, there's a gale blowing in the markets and we're diving off of a high board. Why, why try to do the triple Lindy? Just dive into the water, meaning just go with the big money center banks. A lot of them trading below book value with cash flows that support buying back their shares and dividends. So, you know, if I look at Citi, JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs, the return potential, if I'm right, that this is just a growth slowdown and the economy is going to reaccelerate at the end of the year, the return potential in those names is really quite high. On the downside, there's protection in their cash flows. These so-called disruptive fintech stocks are going to get clobbered if I'm wrong, and their upside, if I'm right, is measurably equal to what I think the big money center banks are going to do. So why make it hard? Gale Forces, Triple Indies, and Lunch Meat all in one block. Amazing show here.